Amen, and I want you to know that he's good all the time. Amen. Amen. Never been a time that he wasn't good. Amen, and I thank God for that. Thank God for you on today. Thank God for our pastor on today who's ready to preach the word. Amen. Y'all ready to hear word? Amen. Help me say preach, Pastor Bland. Preach, Pastor Bland. Good morning. Good morning. We'll get your Bibles and let's start maybe in Ephesians, the third chapter. Glad to be uh, Miss Davis, Sharon Davis and Miss Davis. How y'all doing? Good to see you. Um, it's just always a blessing. It's always a, a pleasure for me to see you because church actually had become such a negative experience for me I'm not saying they were negative I'm just saying the way that I was taking it I'm not putting condemnation or criticism on anyone the main reason uh, is because what I have received I received it by grace and so one of the worst things in the world for people hate to see sister Mary Green is somebody that had a silver spoon in their mouth and then they sit around and complain. Because I realized this morning, I'm getting happy right now, you probably can't tell. I realized this morning that whatever that I have, I don't deserve it. I've stolen something from my brother Edgar. He put on his uh, 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 emails, he had a little byline down there, and I've stolen that from him. And it, and it says, grateful for everything. But worthy of nothing Amen. Grateful for everything But worthy of nothing And so realizing that God Just simply through his grace Has done what he's done for me For no reason Other than his goodness Not because I've been so good Or not because I paid a certain amount of money Not because I've been so faithful Because Sister Kathy, Kathy Jacobs I found out that ain't nobody faithful but God God is faithful. God, if God says something, God will watch over that word to make sure that it come to pass. Now, now, I have said stuff, Mother Brewer, and I promise you, in my heart, I meant to do it. But some of it has got to do with being 61. Some things I just forgot. I said I was going to do it, but, but God never forgets. The promises that even he made way back in what, two, 20, 2000 BC to Abraham. He hadn't forgot any of those promises that he made to Abraham out of Isaac or to Jacob. And God confirms his promises. And so I'm glad to know this morning that, that God uh, does not deal with me according to my performance. God does not deal with me according to my worth. But God deals with me according to his love. And uh, Deacon Weatherby, I often uh, um, compare it to the love of my mom. All the days of my life, if I look back, when I wasn't so lovely, when I was drunk, when I was stumbling, when I had got beat up, when I was gone to jail, when, when I was embarrassing her, she yet loved me. She never turned her back. She never said, no, he ain't, I don't know him, uh, whatever. You see, I know love. And, and so that's the reason y'all messed me up when I got to church. Because when I got to church, you told me, say, if you live right, God will bless you. You, you, you say, if you give 10% of your money. You know, I started out giving him 10%, but when it got tight, I, you know, try to slip him the money. Now, when I'm putting something big in the offering, I got it right up where everybody can see it. But when it ain't nothing but a dollar or two, I'm crumbling up in my hand and just throwing it off in the thing. But you see, I'm, I'm performing for people. Not realizing that my God loves me for no reason at all. You wouldn't tell me about Romans 5 where it says that when we were yet without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. My God, everything that he's ever done for me, he did it because of who that he was. And when you realize that you got somebody that just loves you, you hold your head up, you throw your, your shoulders back. You don't have to hold your head down 
realizing that there is no condemnation. And when I would read that, Sister Jacob, when I would read that, it was like a fairy tale. Romans uh, 8, where it says, There's therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Uh, who, but I, I, that was like a fairy tale to me. I didn't know anything about being in, in God's love and walking that no matter what I did, that, that you know, God, we done made God to my the God of a second chance. I used mine up alone. If he ain't. Brother Orlando, if he's a God of a second chance, I use mine up. The first day I got saved, I, I, I used it up. We've been in a series, I'm not going to hold you. We've been in a series and it's called Stop the Madness. So much that we've been taught in church is just foolishness. Uh, we don't even worry about theology. We don't worry about doctrine. All we worry about is, is getting a good choir so we can hype you up, make you feel good, and send you on your way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, while we got you hyped you up, you know, you know, sometimes people used to get folks drunk and clip them. I know y'all don't know nothing about that. That's my generation. They call, they said, you heard ain't your mother Bracey. When well, they said, we, he, he, he clipped him. Well, let me just put it in you young folk term. When you get you drunk and you don't know what's going on, then they go in your pocket. That's what they've been doing in church to y'all. Get you drunk and then go in your pocket. You get home, you wonder where all your money at. Where all your money at. And you wonder how come your folks won't go to church. He said, I ain't that big a fool. They ain't got me drunk. You started trying to come to get them to come to church, and he, he know that he been hanging out with him last night and bragging about how he was gonna get your money. What did I tell you we were gonna go? Ephesians. Ephesians. Well, that's a good play. Chap chapter three. Let's go to Ephesians three. No, that's not where I want to go. Colossians three. I'm sorry. Colossians three. Stop the madness. Walk according to the truth. Walk according to the truth. You got to defeat uh, Colossians 3? Yeah. Look what the Bible says here. He says, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Uh, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Now let's go to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians 4. Paul here, a strange man, because Paul was a man that profited, that did well in the Jews' religion. Do you know there are folks that's doing well in church? They're doing well off of church, but they ain't doing well off of me because I ain't finna give them now quarter. Now quarter, I'm not. I works too hard for my money. I, I do. I do. I work too hard for it. And this is what I know about money. When it's gone, it's gone. I also know this, Fred, is when you ain't got none, ain't nobody else got none. You need $20. So, man, you should have caught me such and such a... I just... Paul was a strange man because he profited in the Jews' religion. But he, 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 God gave him something better than religion. God gave him a personal relationship. Paul thought that his religion, he, he really was hyped up in it. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisee, a tribe of, of the tribe of Benjamin. Paul was way off into his religion. But then when he met Jesus, when you meet the Lord for yourself, it brings about a change. A difference. Okay. Let me just go and take my subject right now so you'll know kind of where I'm going or where I think I'm going. Look at your neighbor, look him right there in the eye and tell him this. He says, it's because I'm saved. It's because I'm saved. You see, you see stop the madness. Let me, let, let me say this right here. We walk around Sister Mary Green like everybody the same. But there's a difference between light and darkness. There's some things. Now, sometimes we wear the same clothes. Sometimes we go to the same places. Sometimes we talk the same talk. 
But if God has saved you, there is a difference in you. I promise you. You walk so far with him and you tell him, you say, look, I can't go no farther. There's something inside of you that just won't let you do what you used to do. Won't let you talk like you used to talk. It make you stick out like a sore thumb. But it's just because I'm saved. It's just because I'm saved. It's, it's because God elected me. God chose me. If you are saved, you wasn't looking for God. God was looking for you. And that's when folks talking about something. I found the Lord. The Lord ain't never been lost. You was the one that was lost. I found the Lord. If every time I find the Lord, I, I never would have found him. Because I wasn't looking for him, baby. I was a happy heathen. I don't know what y'all was drinking and smoking, but what I was drinking it, thank you, Jesus. It, I was, a couple of times, some of that stuff, that I was uh, getting high with them white boys. Some of that stuff they gave me, I thought I saw the Lord, but I wasn't looking for him. Got me in a cave. I'm in there taking, eating mushrooms and stuff out in the cave. And what I thought I saw him. But I wasn't looking for him. <laughs> yeah, you, they, they probably don't do it no more. When I was younger, they used to have parties. And when you had a party, the first thing we're going to tell them is cut the lights. Cut the, cut the, you don't have no party. The lights bright and whatever. Because I'm getting ready to do wrong. I'm getting, I come here to do wrong. I ain't coming for all the lights to be on now. We're going to cut the lights down. You don't cut the lights on until we get ready to go. And so then you don't seek the light. You seek darkness. So God had to come and find my hiding place. And his spirit had to be so irresistible that I couldn't be comfortable where I was. And the Bible says he has translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the it's because he saved me. Stop this madness. I, I don't have any, I don't have to walk according to the course of this world anymore. I don't have to explain myself to you. Let me just say it's because he saved me. And when God saved me, he made a difference. God put a difference between clean and unclean. He did it on his own. So the Bible, Paul here says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. Now let's talk about prisoner for a minute. Prisoner don't do what he want to do. I think Shea work, you work at the prison, don't you? Them guys, they don't get up when they want to. They don't go to sleep when they want to. They don't go where they want to because they're prisoners. And so Paul characterized himself, the Greek is doulos, which is a bond servant that I've been bought. You see, a bond servant, you buy them. And you see, the Bible says that we've been bought with a price. They wouldn't teach me this in church. If they had taught me, right? How many know you can't do no better than you know to do? <laughs> they've been, they've been, they've been acting JJ like teaching was a luxury. This right here is a necessity, <laughs> and the reason. Look at your neighbor. Say he is because he saved me. You see, you see, you see. Before God saved you, you could take the word or leave it. But when God saves you, the word of God is like it's like oxygen to you. You feel like you suffocating if you can't get the word and can't get no understanding. So, so, so Paul here says, I'm a prisoner. It's because I've been bought with a price. And Paul says his mother none. He says that you are not your own. For you've been bought with a price. What did he buy us with? He bought us not with silver or gold. Ain't that what Peter and John told, told the man at the gate in, in Acts 3? He told the man at the gate, he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give. That's the reason I don't understand these jack leg preachers around here trying to rob widows and offerings and trying to get a nickel and a dime here. You walk past that money and go to the king. I want you to know that everything that you need, God got it in his hand. You ain't got to beat folks out of no money. God will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. But Peter and John said, with silver and gold, we don't have none, and we ain't even worried about it. Because, But such as I have, give by thee. Do I have anybody here that when they found the Lord, they realized that they had found the lover of their soul? That I mean, when, when God came and got them, Paul said, I, Paul, the prisoner of the Lord, 
beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation. Stop the madness. Quit allowing the world to dictate to you how you're supposed to live. Oh, you know, everybody want to make, brother, everybody want to make everybody the same. People ain't the same. People are not the same. And the best thing I ever got was an understanding. Let me tell you something. If you own a job and you get an understanding, it ain't as hard. If you got a wife or a family, if you can get an understanding. We've been just beating folks up in our house and Lord have mercy. It's more, it's more mental abuse going on in the family. We've been beating folks up and criticizing them and ain't nothing they do right when people giving you all they have to give. Sometimes what I'm giving you is all. Right now, it's all I got. Yeah. And that's the reason I thank the Lord for how the Lord is because God meets you right where you are. God, God does not criticize you, but God takes you from glory to glory to glory. And Vivian, I found this out about love. You see, love loves a person right where they are. Have you ever known people that you were so bad, you were so messed up, but they still saw something good in you? And, and then, but you know what? But most folks, they wait until you get to be a lawyer. They wait until you start making six figures. And then they want to put you on program. Then they want to talk about this and talk. Negro, where was you at? Where was you at when I was walking? Where was you at when I was drunk and bumping my head? So Paul said, what God has done for me has changed my life. I feel sorry for you that if God ain't done nothing for you. And that this is a personal thing right here. I don't. I used to try to prove to church folks that I, I was this and I was that. I, when I ride up on the church parking lot, I cut Scarface down so they wouldn't talk about me or nothing. But I ride up here right now with a, a bus and three six mafia type. Thank you, Jesus. Why is it? The reason is, is because I know my God loves me. And if you don't love me, that's your problem. I'm not getting ready to be walking. Why? Because he saved me. God saved. God did the best thing in the world for me. God gave me a new spirit. Thank you, Jesus. So Paul here says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you call. The worst thing in the world is for a person not to live up to their potential. It's a bad thing. Now if a person doing the best they can, that's one thing. But have you ever seen people that they are, they really, they destroying themselves. You say, boy, if you just would get yourself together, the thing that you could do, how, what a blessing that you could be, but you're not walking worthy of who you are. What I got to do is I got to get an understanding, Uncle George. I've got to walk away from certain companions. You got certain folks that ain't going to never let you do no better. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. <laughs> you, you, I ain't talking to nobody else. You got certain folks that's around you that ain't going to never, that, and they ain't going to never see you right. Because that, that, they don't want to see you right. <laughs> And so what I have to do is I have to understand that God saved me so I'm different. God saved me and so I must walk worthy of the vocation. I can't do everything. I can't be with everybody. If you like it or don't like it, Amen. stop this madness. We so worried about, I had a pastor that used to say, Brother Jeff said, if we, if we spend half the time trying to please the Lord, as we spend trying to please each other, we'd be way on down the road. <laughs> I also found this out, Valerie, that folks that really care about you, you ain't got to turn no jumping jacks. You ain't got to, Terrence, that God just gave me a love for that man. I ain't, I don't never see him. Or nothing like that, but every time I see him, I light up like a cheap Christmas tree. God will put certain folks in your life that just love you. You ain't got to take them to lunch. You ain't got to buy them nothing to eat. You ain't got to go against what your parents taught you. They just loved you. Stop this madness. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> we, we said a few years ago, um, Vivian, we, we said, you know what? Let the hostages go free. <laughs> well, some of us got folks in our life, we just holding them folk begging us, let me go. <laughs> you need to do the Emancipation Proclamation today. <laughs> and tell us, I'm letting all Negroes go free. 
<laughs> I'm setting you free today. You don't have to be around me no more. You don't want to be around. I'll be all right. Because I have found the lover of my soul. I'm getting ready to walk worthy of the vocation. Ain't you tired of... Ain't you tired of being held back? I've been held back too long. <laughs> you know the folks you hanging around that they dragging you down and you got much more potential. And so Paul, Paul had to walk away from a lot. Do you ever read where Paul had a wife? Well, he was a member of the Sanhedrin. So he had to have a wife because when they stoned Stephen, he gave his vote and he was on the Sanhedrin and one of the requirements was you be married, but you don't read nowhere about his wife because you see, Paul was a good Jew and when he confessed Christ as his savior, when he recognized Jesus as the Messiah, that put him in hot water with the Jew and eventually it cost him his life, but he said, I can't be, he said, therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. I'm just not the same. I'm tired of coming to church. Well, y'all acting like we supposed to act like we just the same. Something happened to me. God took me out of my foolishness and put me into the kingdom of God. I want to walk now like who I am. You'll never be as happy as when you start being you. Have you spent enough years trying to make other folk happy? Have you spent enough years dumbing down trying to make other people? <laughs> Jolene, you know what they told me when we first started the church? They said now, because I'm telling folks, you know, the Hebrew, the Greek, I'm studying, I'm giving, I'm I ain't got all this music, I'm just sitting folk down, teaching them, giving them understanding. I said, man, you ain't gonna get black folks to sit there. See, the devil is a lie. The devil, we are hungry for the word of God. I'm ready to walk like what he did for me. Do you remember when you got tired of the world? You remember when you got tired of yourself and you threw your hands up and you told God yes? You said yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yeah, this is the last house on the block, Lord. I'm tired of my way. And as soon as God saved you, the folks in the church started messing you up. Trying to take you back up under the weak and beggarly elements. Uh, trying to take you back up under the guidepost. The law was simply a schoolmaster to bring you to Christ. Once you get to Christ, you don't need no schoolmaster because the Bible says the Spirit himself bears witness. Huh? Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Do I have a witness? I got one or two folks that sometimes you ain't even thinking about God and a thought go across your mind huh? and your hand go up huh? and you begin to tell God thank you. Thank you. You don't even know what you're thanking him for. It's because he saved me. Because he saved me, I can't act like I used to act. Because he saved me, I don't want to go to places that I used. Because he saved me, I don't have the same conversation. Because he saved me, I'm no longer my own. I'm the, pri the prisoner of the Lord. And you saved me, God, and I belong to you. So therefore, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm going to say. But I know in that self-same hour, you're going to give it to me. Have you ever been talking to somebody and God begin to anoint you to minister to them? God begin, you tell them some things that you really wasn't mean to tell them. You will cut yourself open and you begin to tell them, say, baby, where you at? I was there about 20 years ago. But the Lord brought me up. I, I don't know who God going to have me to talk to. It's because he saved me. Yeah. Jeremiah 17 and 5 said, Cursed be the man that makes flesh his arm. Cursed be the man. In these churches, what they want you to do is lean and depend upon the church. <laughs> lean and depend upon that denomination. But I want you to know something. When God saves you, he don't mean for you to lean on nobody but him. He don't mean for you to depend on nobody but him. Now, he might send anybody to help you. But yo, you have to know. You have to do like David. You have to look to the hills from which come all of my help. 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who, whom shall I fear? It's because he saved me, Joe. So therefore, I've got to get out of this mindset of worrying about what man can do to me. Do what you must. I've been bought with a price. And I must walk worthy of the vocation. Where with my call? Look, your works don't get you saved, but after you get saved, he'll put you to work. If God have saved you, you're going to do something. If God have saved you, you got to decide to do something. The Bible says he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We, we, we don't have no ministry. See, these churches got this foolishness out here talking about it. And they really like to get on homosexuality. You know, because that ain't them. You know, I ain't homosexual. I'm just too heterosexual. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. It, it don't make no difference. You see, the Bible said that the law is for the lawless. They make the speed. They make the speed law for people that speed. Folk that don't speed, they don't, you don't need no law for them. The law is for the lawless. <laughs> <laughs> the church will be all up in an uproar. They done passed the law now. They said it, said it, said it. Uh, men can marry men and women can. Well, I don't care if they pass the law, said coons can marry coons. It don't bother me, no. You, you don't need no law to stop me from marrying a hard leg, man. The law is for the lawless. But the Bible says that you are not under the, it's Romans 6, 14. He said, you are, you ain't gonna never hear that day, church. You are not under the law. I don't need no guidepost. That, that is for the lawless. But I am the very righteousness of God through Christ. He that knew no sin became sin. That I might be made the righteousness of God. So that I am a righteous man. I don't need the law. I got the spirit of the living God within me which guides me. Jesus told the disciples, he said, when he's the spirit of truth has come, he will lead you and he'll, do I have a witness? It's because he saved me. He saved me. You get in church, the preacher want to be your Holy Ghost. He want to give you the guide, do this and, and do that. He don't care nothing about what God is doing in your life. This is, this is my vision right here. I got a vision. We've been here 12 years. I ain't had a vision yet. <laughs> This is my vision for the church. You got the spirit of God. You already got the vision within you. Ain't nothing for me to do, Sister Bimmer, but move out the way. Ain't nothing for me to do but let God have his way. What I found out is that God don't make hard turns with nobody. But the only thing about it is, is that God don't start to you through. When you get through, that's when God starts. What, what they said, won't he will? Won't he do it? I don't care. You could be you could be so illiterate you can't read your name on big box car letters. But if you'll move and get out of the way, God will teach you how to read. God will give you an understanding that a theological student don't have because they the natural man don't receive the things of the Spirit of God. And when God saved you, you are a new creature. And so therefore you don't have to first John 2 and 27 said you have no need that any man teach you for the same anointing shall teach you all things the only thing by me preaching then the spirit will confirm what I say unto you the Bible said try the spirit by the spirit if what I'm talking about don't agree with the Holy Ghost I ain't talking about nothing look what he says here he said with all lowliness and meekness walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you call you stop fighting yeah you, you stop giving folk trouble and you but deacon weatherby you don't have to fight when you're not making your way you see you see just like he said in second chronicles 20 uh he, the prophet told him say you shall have no need to fight in this battle he, he said for the battle it's because I'm saved. <laughs> oh, I, it's because I'm saved. <laughs> and that's reading Paul over in Ephesians. So look, he said, look at here, put on the whole arm um, of the God. And then he said here, Mary Green, he, he said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I, I don't fight you necessarily with a pistol, but I will pull one. But... <laughs> 
I'll, I'll put that thing on you, I'm telling you. Because them folk might not get here fast enough. And Paul says, in Th Paul, I got Bible on it. Paul says in Thessalonians, he said, any man won't take care of his own house. Say he's worse than an infidel. <laughs> if your wife and children, are, they, if they scared and they look over there at you and you scared, uh, they thank you, Jesus. <laughs> he might be bigger than you, but that thing, boy, I tell you, it's an equalizer. <laughs> it, it'll change a bad man's mind. <laughs> it'll change his mind. Look what he says here. He said, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, in bearing, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. He said, there's one body, one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. That's the reason water baptism didn't work for me. They dipped me about three times. Every time I get real sorry, I say, y'all need to baptize me again. Because I done messed up. God put me up under that water. Put me up under that. And then you know what? Where I come from, it was a big deal. Because they used to baptize you down there in Old Town Lake. You, you see, we, we, we said, oh, them, them, them baptizing in, the, in these church right there, that ain't the real baptism. Well, I want to be baptized like Jesus, John baptized Jesus. I want to go down in the water. Boy, and I tell you what, man, they be out there and everybody have white on and they get to singing and they be singing, take me to the water. Take me to the water. I, I get all in my emotions and everything, man. That man take you down, man, and you come up, boy, and you really feel like, boy, I done made a change. But I come to tell you today that water won't change you. Today, there's only one spirit, one baptism. Uh, and Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians. He said, for by one spirit uh, are we all baptized into ways because he saved me. When God saved me, his spirit God's spirit took me from where I was and he put me in another place. God gave me, Brother Kari, another standard. Another standard. And it confuses us when we don't act like who we are. You act like who you are. Have you ever been told that about your family? You don't act like no blame. My mom and dad them told me that. I hope, you, I hope you come from a family that stand for something. I hope you come from a family that say, look here, that's the reason that when we got, you know, uh, about in our 40s, we got in our 40s, that empty nest syndrome. Lady Deborah told me something, I think we need to adopt a child. That was before we got a grandchild. Now we got a grandchild now, that foolishness is gone. But I think we need to adopt a child. There ain't nothing wrong with it, especially a lot of African-American children have, uh, they, they don't get adopted as, 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 as often as other children. So ain't nothing wrong with it. But let me tell you what the problem that I had with it. The problem that I had with it is, I got two knucklehead sons of my own. You see, ain't now one of them at church this morning. <laughs> the dad of the pastor. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But you know what? When I look at them, if I don't remember my mama tell me, they just like you. Don't that make you mad? Don't that make you mad? He ain't doing nothing you ain't doing. You, you act the same way. Well, I can put up with you. That, I can put up with you, Sharia. Okay, okay. That, that's, that's me right there. That's me. I don't do it no more, but that's me. Okay. I know where that come from. Right. But I go adopt the rascal. <laughs> we, uh, you mess around and wake up one night and he's standing over you breathing. <laughs> breathing hard. I'm like, I, I don't know where this come from right here. Ain't nobody in our house never acting. Walk away is because he saved me. I'm in the family of God now. I'm the sons of God. And so then I, it's a certain way that we walk. And so then God has to correct me. And that's the reason I have to come here and be, be instructed as to how I'm supposed to act. Because church folks are having me thinking it's all right as long as I put so much money in. It's all right as long as I act like I'm saved when I come to church. 
I got to know who I am. I promise y'all, I didn't know who I was until, in, until I got over here in Manasseh. They never told me. Now God, you don't have to know who you are for God to save you because he saved you by grace. It don't have nothing to do with you. You believe under salvation. But after that you believe, then you have to be instructed as to who you are. That's the reason the Bible tells us not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because you saved don't mean you're a different person. Your mind got to change. If I'm still thinking the same way, I'm going to do the same things. But when God changes, okay, you didn't do no better until you realized who you were. When you realized who you were, have you ever been working on a job? I'm talking about for years. And realize you ain't got no money? I'm getting up going to work. You're spending everything that you're getting. I'm going to work. I ain't putting nothing back. I ain't saving nothing or nothing. And then, see, you have to realize who you are. You said, this don't make no sense. And most of us start saving late. But ain't nothing like walking worthy of who you are. Now watch this, JJ. There's some folk who gonna have a problem with that. It gonna have some problem with you being who you are. Okay, let me see if I can bring it down to Elaine terms. Can you remember when you were a child and your mama was trying to talk to you about you don't need to fool with them, baby? Leave them alone. They don't mean you no, they don't mean you no good. Everybody laughing in your face don't mean you no good. Everybody showing your teeth don't, don't mean you no good. Because you didn't know who you were. And because you were searching for identity. And these people made you feel good. What you tell mama? Oh, no, mama. You don't know, mama. But after you had got that right whooping, she didn't have to tell you. You came back and told her. And when you came, your nose was not and you were crying. Mama, you were right. Mama, you were right. You sound like an ambulance. You start out real like, oh, you right. <laughs> One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in, in you all. I ain't got about five minutes. Give, take, let's go over to Ephesians. Let's look at Ephesians. That's a good play. Ephesians 2. Look what he says. Ephesians 2. We're almost true. It's because he saved me. Do you stop the madness? I don't even want to hear it. There's certain folks I'm not going to be around. Certain folks I'm just not. You're not good for my family. You're not good for my family. You see, when a man grow up, he start doing things that's beneficial to his family. Some men never grow up. Uh huh. That's when you go to Walmart and go to the store, and that's where with y'all go to McDonald's with your friends, and that's where y'all sit for two or three hours, sitting up there watching the little girl lusting while they walk through. It take you three hours to drink a cup of coffee. And the reason is because you ain't never grown up. Is that benefiting your family? If nothing else, you got that kind of time? Go home and talk to your wife. You ain't talked to her in about 10 years. If you talk to her, you'll find out what you're looking for. You already got it right here. Let me get grown on you. You'll find out you got more than you know what to thank you, Jesus. No, you ain't been doing nothing with that. Thank you. All right. Look what he says. And you have he quickened. Terrence, I'm so glad to be here, man. I thank God for Manasseh, man. Because they used to try to make me believe that the pastor had done something for me. They used to try to make me believe. See, I come from Kojic. And you know, they really brainwashed. I said, it's a cult. I said it. It's a cult. That's what it is. I came up out of it. I was in 25, in the 25 years. I ain't standing up here for no money, no friends, or nothing. If y'all shut me down and send me home today, I'd be all right. I'd be all right. Because I'm going to go to work in the morning. He says, and you have, God did this for me. Quit trying to take God's glory. Quit trying to act like that. I, I, well, and the reason is because they want you to believe you, that you can't stand unless they with you. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. 
That ain't how folks that love you treat you. Amen. Folks that love you do not make you dependent upon them. Amen. Folks that love you. And folks tell me sometimes, they say, man, so you practice law and you're pastoring and everything. How do you handle all of that? Because it's easy. Yes. I ain't no pastor like y'all. Right. I'm not getting ready to be nursemaid, nobody. All right, all right. Whining and crying to me, go tell the Lord about it. Right. I send you the same place I go. I'm not finna be paying your car note, your light bill, and whatever. I had a few of them, they ain't come back no more. Cause, cause the baby, I don't loan no money. That ain't how you get money. Now I can show you how to get some money. Get up off of your constitution and go to work. I got Bible on it. The Bible says if a man will not work, he don't eat. He don't eat. And more than likely, 90% of the time, if you broke, it's a reason why you broke. I knew it was a reason I was broke. And you got to change your behavior in not order to be broke. And I ain't like some folks. Some folks can't stand for folks to be broke. I can stand. I just can't stand for me to be broke. I know y'all say, I thank God for Manasseh because ain't nobody going to let me preach like this nowhere. Nowhere, but I need the truth. Don't be trying to sell me no dreams or nothing like that. And I want to feel good about me. I ain't got no business. Just, I just, you know what? When you let folks just lean on you and lean on you and what, whatever, them the very people can't stand you. That's when you get your feeling hurt. When you find out how they really feel about you, then you run around. All I did for him. That's your fault. He said, you have been quick and you were dead in your trespasses and sin, where in the time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince, it's because he saved me, of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience are in unbelief. If I don't, if I'm not a believer, then I walk a certain kind of way. But mother non, if I'm a believer, even if I walk into bankruptcy court, even if it look like my house is totally up from the flow up even if it looked like I done went out and ain't never coming back because I'm a believer you can't make me doubt him I know too much about him I know where he brought me from I know where God brought me from Every now and then, Kay, I have to tell the Lord, say, Lord, I've been here before. This ain't my first rodeo. This ain't the first time I've been down to my last money. This ain't the first time that friends have walked off and left me. But I heard the songwriter say, Bunker George, he said, if he have to reach way down. I heard the songwriter say if he have to reach way down, he will. Clap your hands for the Lord. 